Okay, John chapter 6. Now, here we're going to see some more miracles, but really, it's more than just about the miracles. Jesus is doing miracles so that he could teach the people about himself. So, verse 1, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, and a huge crowd kept following because of his miraculous signs. So, we see he's getting more and more popular because of the miracles he's performing. And verse 5, he saw a huge crowd of people coming to look, and and he turned to Philip and he said, where are we going to buy food? bread to feed all these people. And he was testing Philip because he already knew what he was going to do. So we can see that he's trying to teach his disciples a lesson here. Also the thousands of people in attendance there that day. He certainly didn't need to feed them. And certainly it wasn't a life or death situation to feed them. But he's going to feed them because he wants to turn it into a teaching moment. So you can read that miracle for yourself. And you can see that he did Uh, He did this incredible miracle. The disciples all got to be a part of the miracle. And the people saw him do it. And they said, this surely is the prophet we've been expecting. So again, that's the question. You know, who is this guy? Is he the Messiah? Is he the Savior? Is What is he here for? We see in the next passage, he walks on water. Once again, just showing the disciples what he's here for, that he really is uh, powerful and he's not just a prophet or a teacher. Now, in the next section, then, he talks about the bread of life, and now he turns it into a teaching. So that same crowd tracks tracks him down the next day, and and they're, they they want to see more, they want to hear more, and he begins to teach them. He says, don't be concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you, for God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. So it kind of reminds you of the Samaritan woman, his message. He said, if you drink this water, you'll still be thirsty. But if you drink my water, you know, the living water, then you'll you'll never thirst again. And now he's saying the same thing about food. And and they said, well, we, we want to perform God's works too, so what should we do? And, and Jesus said to them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. So we see this thing theme over and over again. Believe. Believe in who I am. Believe in me. If you believe in me, you'll have eternal life. Notice he doesn't say if you do all these good things and become a better person and become really religious like the religious leaders. He, he's always bringing it back to faith and belief. And we're going to see that throughout the New Testament. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Once again, referencing back to what he said to the Samaritan woman. A lot of more teaching there in verse 47. He says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. So once again, he's he's trying to take this miracle that he performs at the beginning of the chapter, and he's trying to get them to understand that it's pointing to a deeper truth. Now, at the very end of the chapter, it says, many of his disciples says or said, this is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? So it was one of his teachings about eating his flesh, and it was metaphorical, but they, they had a hard time understanding it. And so Jesus understood, and these were the fringe disciples, not his 12. So he he turns in verse 67, he turns to the 12 and he says, are you also going to leave? And that's a great question. You know, are you, how, how, are, how, are, how hard is it for you to trust what Jesus is saying and to take what he's saying and to come to him on his terms instead of on your own terms? And he kind of answers that in verse 63, the spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing, and the very words I've spoken to you are spirit and life. That's why it's important to keep reading a chapter a day.